Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to my first ever Crash Course in Formal Logic. In this first part of the first series, we're going to cover logic, arguments, and premises, and conclusions, all explained simply. But I do have to warn you, one thing that won't be simple about this course is it is a crash course. We're going to be covering about two lectures worth of material in each one of these video presentations. So hold on tight for that. Now, in the first course, I'm going to cover logic basics. That's just basic argument analysis, fallacies, uh, category logic, and propositional logic, including truth table and natural deduction methods. And that should be enough for any college-level introduction to logic. But later on, I'll offer an advanced course in logic covering probabilities quantified modal and first-order quantified modal logic. Now, Aristotle is the person we have to credit with first formalizing logic as a discipline, and he also created nearly every other discipline that we study in the universities almost from scratch. It's been said about Aristotle, he may have been the last person on earth who knew everything there was to know in his lifetime. Now, arguments, as we're going to study them, are not heated exchanges or personal assaults. And by the same token, they're not merely disagreements and opinions or the automatic contradicting of an opponent or one's opponent's position, even though the term argument is sometimes used that way in the vernacular. Now, one person who exploits this uh, use or understanding of the term argument is Charles Schultz in his Peanuts cartoon series. Lucy asked Schroeder why he likes Beethoven better than her, and, well, Schroeder comes a little bit argumentative. And that sort of argumentation does not leave room for discussion, Lucy complains. Linus is another person who's always itching for some verbal combat. Uh, when asked if it's a beautiful day, uh, Linus replies with a lot of combative questions. And what he says last of all is pretty interesting. A good fanatic is always ready for an argument. Now that may be true, but a good fanatic is not ready for an argument in the sense that we are going to define the term. This is a logic course, and logic is the science of argument evaluation. We put arguments under the microscope of logic and see if those arguments stand up or whether they work. In order to do that, the first thing we're going to have to do before we study logic is to get an understanding of what an argument is. An argument is a set of statements. In other words, one statement by itself never constitutes an argument. The unique thing about these sets of statements is this. Some of those statements, called the premises, claim to be support or reasons for another in the batch. So you get these sorts of relationships of evidential support holding between statements. The statements that give evidence are called the premises. And the statements that receive the support from the premises on the opposite end of those arrows, those statements are called the conclusion. Well, now that we've defined the term arguments, it's time to move on and define statements in more detail. Statements are sentences capable of being true or false. For example, if all cats are said to be vicious, that statement would be false. But notice we have a sentence here capable of taking a truth value. And similarly, somebody might say that some old men are grumpy, and that sentence is more than likely true, since we just limited it to some old men. But again, statements are a unique type of sentence. Now, not every sentence or utterance qualifies as a statement. There are certain very meaningful sentences or utterances, such as, where's my milk, yowie, or get me a sandwich, perfectly meaningful, but not statements. Why? Well, as a general rule, questions, exclamations, imperatives, and commands cannot take truth values because they don't assert anything about the way the world is. Therefore, they cannot be true or false, and they cannot be statements, and they cannot serve as premises or conclusions and arguments as we have defined the term argument. Well, so far I've given you a lot of important terms, the most important of which on this little cheat sheet that you can look back on is the term inference. That's the reasoning process of an argument. It's whatever type of reasoning gets you from the premises or to the conclusion. And we'll study that in more detail later on. For example, consider the following batch of statements. All film stars are celebrities. Halle Berry is a film star and Halle Berry is a celebrity. You can divide these statements up into premises and a conclusion that can be reached upon them, and as it turns out, in this case, all of our statements turn out as true, but that is not always the case. Consider the following batch of statements. How about some film stars are men and Cameron Diaz is a film star, therefore Cameron Diaz is a man? Well, if you, these are premises and conclusions, what we find out is that the premises statements turn out true and the conclusion statement turns out to be false. The point here is this. In this sort of case, something seems to have gone wrong with the inference, the leap from the premise statements to the conclusion statements. And what went right or wrong in these inferences is the subject matter for logic in this course. 
But before we study logic in any detail, we've got to get more clear on how to distinguish conclusions and premises. One helpful hint is indicator words, and just about any good logic textbook is going to give you a list, something like this. Therefore, accordingly, entails that, wherefore. Don't memorize the list. Just get the basic principle that these are conclusion indicators. They tell you that somebody is about to state the conclusion of their argument. For example, somebody might say, tortured prisoners will say, anything to relieve their pain and consequently torture is not a reliable method for obtaining information from prisoners. Now that term consequently tells you that the person's about to state the conclusion that they've reached upon their reasons or premises probably given earlier. And conclusion indicators aren't your only helpful tool. There are also premise indicators, reason indicator terms such as since, in that, seeing that, as indicated by. All of those sorts of terms tell you that the person is about to present reasons for a particular point of view that they hold. So, for example, parents should never shake a crying baby. Why reach that conclusion? Since the baby's delicate body and brain might be easily traumatized. Since indicates a reason or a premise statement is about to be given. Now, regarding reasons, watch out for this term. McDonald's has fatty foods for this reason I should go to Subway. In this sort of paragraph, reason indicates that a conclusion, I should go to Subway, is about to be reached. But by way of contrast, I should go to Subway for the reason that McDonald's has fatty foods. Well, here reason indicates that a premise is about to be offered. So for those of you who might be a little confused, let me clear this little matter up. When somebody says, for this reason, this looks back to a reason already given and says that a conclusion is about to be offered on the basis of reasons already given previously. However, for the reason that looks forward to a reason that is about to be given. So that is a premise indicator. There are some other helpful tips when you're dealing with uh, paragraphs and conversations in everyday life. One indicator word may signal more than one premise. For example, since my company is in the red and I'm not seeing any hope of recovery, I should file for bankruptcy. Technically speaking, you could divide this up into three statements. My company is in the red. I'm not seeing any hope of recovery. The conclusion statement is, I should file for bankruptcy. Two premises or two reasons were given for that conclusion. And also, sometimes you'll find that there are no indicators in a passage, and if that happens, suspect the conclusion was offered up front. Maybe I've just been playing Frogger too much, but I came up with this example. I shouldn't cross the road. It's rush hour, and the last two frogs were flattened. Notice, no conclusion and no premise indicators here. But the conclusion, I shouldn't cross the road, receives support from two other statements.